<laughs> All right, so um, before we start, first off, this is being broadcast from Colorado, so we are in compliance with our local laws. Please follow the laws of your local jurisdiction. This is not endorsement of illegal activity. Um, welcome to Sticky Segments. Uh, this is Ricky. I'm joined by Casey, the production manager over at Sticky Fingers, and John from Craft. Hello, hello. Hey, Sam. So, John, um, Craft, awesome. I, th I think it's a great product. Um, I've been in the industry for a while. You guys have been around for a long time. Um, tell me about you. Like, how, how did you get into Craft, and what, what is that? Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for having me on the show. I love an opportunity to always to get together with uh, other folks in the industry and talk a little bit about what we do day in, day out, get the word out a little bit, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm born and raised in Houston, Texas, so uh, long ways from here, you know, long ways from the snow and all that, but I always, we did a lot of family trips to uh, Colorado and things like that when I was uh, younger, so I always loved the state in general. Um, but of course, you know, once uh, cannabis came into my life around when I was 15, um, you know, uh, of course, uh, I, I don't endorse, you know, until you're of legal age, you know, in order to use the stuff. Right, but no. in the, the legal market, I think uh, before things started to go our way, uh, it was a little bit of a different world, as we all know, you know. Absolutely. And, um, it still is in a lot of places. Absolutely. I know. And now, now we're in the different world now, of course. Right. So it's like a, an alien planet. But, um, of course, I, I fell fell in love with uh, with cannabis from day one. It uh, changed my life in a lot of ways. Um, I think I am who I am today because of it. Um, you know, just being able to gain new uh, perceptions and things like that, and and growing as a person. I think that you know I immediately uh, grew to love it and what it was doing and the people it was bringing into my life and the conversations I was having. Never in a million years would I think that I was going to you know do it professionally. You know, back then that was a long shot. But as things started to change, uh, I saw the opportunity, I saw the growth in the industry and, and, and with the kind of the outspoken nature of the people that enjoy it as well, changing. Um, and, and, you know, I embraced it. I moved here in 2015 um, and immediately got on with Kraft. Kraft launched uh, January of 2015. It was a medical only company. I actually answered a Craigslist ad to just be a packager. Right. Um, so, you know, didn't, you know, didn't say craft on the ad, but back then it wouldn't have meant anything anyways because they weren't anybody yet. So, no, no. Uh, it was great you know, getting on early like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've been able to watch the company grow and yes. really it aligns with you. Tell me, tell me, what makes craft like unique and exceptional? So I think there's a few things I think that make us stand apart um, in, in an industry that it's difficult to stand apart in, I think, especially from the brand perspective at this point in the game. But Absolutely, so many players. Uh, so many players, and you know, new ones coming in every day. And I love it, you know, I love to see the uh, open market that we have here, you know, the fishbowl that we're working in and being able to see all these things develop. But uh, from day one, I think Kraft um, did what they could to try to bring a product that match the products that you buy every day. And what I mean by that is that when we first came in, you know, packaging and consistency and, uh, you know, sticking to what, you know, your ethos might be wasn't the norm. Um, you know, there's brands coming in and out, changing licenses, changing names. Uh, it was very early. Um, packaging was just a heat sealed sleeve sometimes with a sticker stuck on it. Right. You know, from day one, we tried to bring you know, our original hex packaging from the Panacea to the market, something that people felt they could trust and recognize. Just like you go to the store, I mean, if you love Diet Coke, you know, you go and you see it, you know what you're going to get. You're excited to pour it on the ice and drink it. You know, you don't have a question about what that experience is going to be like. And we felt like there was a void there. And we continue five years later to try to look to be that brand that people can rely on because there's still been change and brands have Absolutely. come in and out, you know. Yeah, and so. Maybe. We want to be that constant in, in the uh, concentrate and extract smoker's life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, definitely that, that answers one of my questions is like, you know, we, this is a very dynamic industry. Absolutely. Um, you know, if, we're, if you fall behind, if you miss a trend, it, it will hurt you. Um, but it sounds like with Kraft, you, you have a developed brand, you have a developed sense, um, you have, a, I'm assuming, a developed process. Uh, you know, it looks, it's always quality from what we see um, on our end at the store. Absolutely, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so like from Sticky Fingers point of view, uh, we actually 
you were the first vendor we put in our store. We started with like 300 bucks. This, yes, yes. yes. Um, 300 bucks, and we got, uh, I want to say, 15 cartridges and about uh, 150 cess joints, which amazing product, the cess joints. I'm just Possibly saying. my favorite. Possibly it, my favorite. It's craft easily product. a staff favorite. <coughs> it's easily a staff favorite for sure. Um, <coughs> but, you know, definitely the cess joints, the, that market. You know, I, I still to this day that's one of my top selling skews. Um, it's the it's the blend a little bit from the, the the flower smoker that's trying to dip their toe in the water on extracts. I think it's a great kind of gateway for them to try it out without being overwhelmed with you know a dab. Absolutely, absolutely, um, and it's a consistent product. Like you know, there's uh, you know you have a lot of different strains you work with, but the, the product is always there. Um, silence anyway uh. <laughs> well I think you know, so one thing that I wanted to elaborate on is, um, what the owner of craft we we're, we're a, we call ourselves a family company because it's it's a, Scott Ryman and his wife Christy yeah. own it and they've owned it since day one uh, they're in the office every single day uh, we interact I work directly underneath Scott every single day to try to um, drive the idea behind our products and for instance day one he's always stressed the three P's people product and process and in that order, because if you get good people, um, I'm sorry, people process products. If you get good people, you can develop good processes, and the product will take care of itself. And I think I'm living, walking proof that craft. You know, I've been there for five years, which you know the turnover is is is, is tough in this company. Which is the change, the you whole, know, the whole industry all over. Like you, you see one, you see a new person every week at your dispensary. It seems like absolutely. You know, it's something we battle in terms of the education side of things. You know, in terms of having people being able to know exactly what our products are. So and when you have that dialed in process, you need people that can execute that process exactly. every time, over and over. Quality. We can't ever sh shake, and we have standards, SOPs, everything in our lab, all the way down to it's as simple as a color chart on our on our concentrates. If it's not beyond this point on color, it's not. Then it's not going to hit the shelf inside a sesh box or a panacea box. So. Um, it's, it feels good from, you know, I, working in sales, it feels good for me. It's something that I can get behind and believe in, and I can go out there and talk about um, in a way that I know that the product's going to back me up. You know, once the end user experiences it, once the bud tenders and the, uh, you know, the staffs inside of our stores, um, you know, get to touch it, and, and, and you know that they're not going to talk and sell something inside of your shop unless they believe in it too. Absolutely, they have to have a faith in the product. They have absolutely. To, when they look somebody in the eye and said, "No, this is going to get this is going to get what you want done." Absolutely. Uh, they 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 need to speak from like real hand experience. Uh, you can tell whenever it doesn't come from a place of of, of truth. Whenever somebody is selling you yeah. something, you know, and, and I've never had to do that. Thank God for five years of craft. Uh, you know, besides talk about the products that I personally use and love, and can talk about the experience I have with them. I mean, it is certainly an easy sale for everyone in <laughs> Sticky Fingers, uh, you know, just because yeah. we, I, I want, like, back to your sesh joints, I think um, my staff buys about 25% of what I order. I have and a few of the house right now, for sure. I brought a few today as well, so I'm um, glad that you guys are a spot that people can go to get them, and, um, and, and then get the quality experience that Sticky Fingers provides, you know? Absolutely, not just Sticky Fingers, it's craft. I mean, you know, you help us with our quality. We, we have great in-house flour, but, you know, we look to, um, we, we sell all our stuff, so we, we look to, you know, responsible, add good vendors that can give us consistent quality. Absolutely. And we're, we're so lucky to have found you in this market. I appreciate it. And we appreciate the chance to, to get on your shelves and you guys are just starting out and be that brand that I'm kind of talking about, that people walk in and say they have craft, you know, or they have session, yeah. and they can come in and get it from you guys and uh, and have a great experience while they're in the shop talking to your staff. So, so it's Casey, a win-win. Yeah, Casey, like how many people a day, like would you say, purchase sesh joints? Oh my God, like maybe 80% <laughs> of our customers that walk in. And it doesn't matter if they get like maybe a couple grams of dab or a couple grams of flour and they're always like, yo, let me, let me get that three for 20 on the sesh joints. And it, that's what and it kind of goes back to, you know? We all, I think we all at some point, uh, inevitably, uh, started with flour, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. nice to be able to kind of find that gap and have it as the add-on at an affordable price. You know, for a long time, the infused um, cone market was a bit overwhelming, I think. I think Very I found myself walking in before I'm going to a show saying I could spend $25 for this joint that's like 
uh, two grams have been rolled and dipped and swished and, and it's like man I don't know am I gonna be able to drive home you know after that you know <laughs> I'd rather be able to get something that's just a little bit of a kick to what I'm normally smoking full right. mug yeah. you know not stuff from the bottom of the jars or whatever that you see a lot of the time so um, we've been really I, I've been a panacea um, a cartridge fan uh, for, the, for the most part in terms of my number one product but I just told everybody the other day that I'm pretty sure sesh cones are taking over the top spot in my own mind <laughs> for sure um, so about cartridges uh, one thing we're seeing that that uh, I mean we'll talk about the industry overall in, in a second but cartridges in, uh, in particular we've seen a lot of health scares a lot of um, concern sure. um, out there in the market I guess scare wouldn't be accurate people are getting sick absolutely um, not that you're a doctor, not you're, that you're any medical professional, sure. but do you think that this is something that is linked to the legal cannabis market? So far, uh, every report that I've seen is, is no. Um, I think that the CDC released a statement um, linking um, after the autopsies came back of some of the people that, that did get sick, it showed that uh, vitamin E acetate was at the point in their lungs picked up. Again, I'm not a doctor no, or a scientist, no, we're, we're, so we don't, this we don't is, know. This is speculation. We can this only go off with the CDC. Sure, like, sure. Know, the CDC publishes. statement you know, is what we've been able to see and, and go by. It's all been linked to illicit sales. And I think that, um, you know, I know that internally at Kraft, you know, we have two, two ingredients in our cartridges, and Absolutely. that's cannabis THC distillate and terpenes. Yeah. So those are the two distillates, they're the two ingredients that go into our cartridges. And, um, you know, I think that the regulations, I've been very proud of the regulations in Colorado. Yeah. I, I, I champion the regulations Absolutely. here. And I think that they've done a good job to keep that sort of stuff out. Um, vitamin E acetate, um, allegedly being the, the culprit there is tied to moisturizers and base creams you know it's yeah. not it's not something I've ever heard talked about you know there's a lot of different cutting agents that have been out there um, but for us you know in our industry we can only worry about ourselves and, and our neighbors within this industry Absolutely. and we, we so we've just turned to education you know we don't have the voice that the CDC does or that you know the president does or whoever might want to get on a mic on on the news Absolutely. which is the problem is that our voice doesn't get heard as well but what we can do is just never stop talking about it and whoever hears can pass it down you know amen to that um so yeah so like obviously what you're doing is what most places that are still doing cards are doing and that's education and that's absolutely. having a responsible product from day one absolutely um you haven't had to pull any of your products in light of any of the things that have happened you're you know you've been out at, you were out in front of this before it was out in front of the uh, absolutely that makes sense yes um so i mean you guys are on your game and again that goes back to your process sure. and your products absolutely you, know, you have that great those two of those great piece hammered down i'm looking at the third right in front of me absolutely so, i appreciate that uh but yeah no cartridges i mean we'll see do, do you think it do you think they're gonna die um i definitely think that um i try to look at the positives and things i think that people are going to to be more educated, look for more information around them. I hope that they don't. I personally find them to be one of the most convenient ways, dis discreet, convenient, however you're looking to partake in cannabis, I think it's a very great way to do it. Um, it's convenient, it, it, it's something we're probably gonna do here in a few minutes. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right? Um, and, and it's a great way to, uh, to take it with you and, and be able to enjoy it in any type of an experience. That's what we want people to be able to do. That's our dream. So with that in mind, I hope not. But at the same time, I do hope that all we've ever really asked is for people to really take a look at cannabis and tell us the answers. You know, FDA, where you at? Um, you know, the people no, that mean, do need to draw the lines, come in. We would welcome you. We're trying to do things the right way. And I think that all we can do is continue with that and look out for the people by keeping our ingredients simple, um, no additives. And, and wait for the answers to come to us, but at the same time, uh, we can't do it without the help of, of the real deal, you know? Absolutely, no. I mean, they, they spend a lot of money on enforcement, and if they spend some of that on testing, maybe we have more answers. Agreed. Um, so We're under attack, a no, little bit. Industry, I mean, I hate to say it. I, mean, well, I want to be safe, but I do feel like, you know, we, you know the threat that we that we as an industry um, for, you know, put out towards Big Pharma and a lot of people Absolutely. out there that yeah. are gonna protect that. And they do have that voice, so, but we're the ones to take it. So bring it on, I think. You know, Big Pharma, for-profit prisons, yep. you know, it goes on, drug drug companies, it goes on, it goes the on. The war on drugs is a, is a business. It is, it's a business before it's about, a, about people. About safety, right, no, I agree. 
But like I said, I think we're the ones to take it on. Uh, we have great people in the street, just in craft alone, our chemist. I mean, I love sitting down and hearing, learning more about the effects of individual terpenes, learning more about the effects of everything. We're here to learn. I think that's who we are as an industry and as a people. And, um, and that's why I think that it comes through spe specifically in Colorado where we put regulations first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. In Colorado, one of the first places to legalize medically and I think we were the first recreational. I think so too, yeah, absolutely. I mean, before uh, there might have been. So Washington might have snuck in there. They might have, yeah, I no, but otherwise. West Coast time comes down. We've been count. doing it right since day one. Exactly, right? We were hours before, I think, so. Um, so. But yeah, I think that it's something that needs to be acknowledged, and I think that I've seen plenty of other brands that do vapes uh, put out as much messaging as they can. It's just unfortunate that we're limited to uh, social media, um, and you know, within the companies that we work with, you know, the word of mouth. But that's how this company, this that's how this industry has been since day one. It's grassroots, Indeed. so we have the network set up to get the info out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, definitely, we'll get it out there. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Just advocating, advocating that crap on it. All right, so I'm curious. I'm sorry, you got these beautiful boxes yes. in front of me, um, and I want to know what's inside them. So a little bit about you know going off of what we were talking about earlier, what makes us different. I think it's important. This industry has been changing. I, I joke around and say that a year in the cannabis industry is like dog years. Like it's like seven, seven years. Or eight. Yeah. Easily. So. You know, not just with the experience of working in this industry, but also with the change that happens. It's we're in a petri dish. The chemical reaction is happening rapidly, and so you know, when I first started, I was talking top shelf stuff as nug run and shatter. You know, right. and now look at the beautiful extracts that we have out oh there. Gosh, you know, solventless has really made a surge over the past year again, um, and so all those different products. I think it's important in this industry, as a, from a brand perspective, to be agile, flexible, and I think most importantly, willing to change, adjust, tweak. Um, and, and introduce new products. So absolutely, we're absolutely. one of the few companies that has Med and Rec. You see a lot of maybe Rec only companies these or days, med or Med only. We're Med and Rec. Uh, you see a lot of companies that say we're a vape company, we're a live resin company. Um, you know, we're a distillate company. Where uh, we make infused nug cones because we have a grow. Right. Um, we do it all. We're one of the very few uh, people that do Med and Rec and try to offer every single product on both sides. So. What I have here is um, a breakdown of our three product lines, uh, which are oil, sesh, and panacea. Awesome. Um, kind of the way, a simplistic way to look at that is good, better, best, you know, um, in terms of the way we offer it and what the product is. We want to, every customer that comes in, whether they've lived in Colorado for 10 years and they can't wait to get home to their email, or the one that's here visiting going to Red Rocks, we try to have something that they can recognize and come back to. So going through this a little bit, uh, the Panacea line um, is our top shelf stuff, and this is our live resin. So we do make a live resin, um, a med and rec. And then uh, our Sesh line here, I have both a 1,000 milligram and a 500 milligram distillate cartridge. So that's kind of our everyday brand. Uh, we try to make that our fun brand. Um, it's a little bit more flavorful on the terpene side, so we, we, we put a little bit more of that. And then we're going to start in 2020 um, cycling through the strains that we offer on, on Sesh to give the folks something to, you know, try out, try new strains yeah, out. You know, and I think it's going to be kind of our fun brand going forward that it already is with the bright orange coloring and, and, and recognizable. So we also have, I brought a few of our Sesh Nug Cones that we've been talking about, um, which are full Nug flour infused with our PHO wax. Absolutely. Um, craft originated, we call ourselves the Faux Originals. Um, I'm sure the, we weren't the first ones to ever do it, but in the craft, in the Colorado market, we don't mix any gases on our extraction. Um, awesome. No butane, strictly propane. You do sacrifice some yield there. Um, it's a little bit less of a harsh gas, but um, you get a higher quality, higher terpene content, and a, a nice blonde finish on, on all of our wax. So I do have a gram of that here. Um, and then our oil line is, uh, is kind of our no frills, um, everything you need, nothing you don't. We don't doll up the packaging too much but it's everything you need. It's a punch of a distillate with terpenes. Again, two, two ingredients. It's just a little bit less flavorful, and it's gonna be our classic line of strains that we have now. They'll always be offered on our oil line. So we have Absolutely. a 1,000 milligram and a 500 milligram on those as well. Absolutely. Um, so 
actually, this is something that I just, uh, I, it just hit me. What, what's the difference between wax and shatter? So wax and shatter start out as, as a very similar product after the, after the first extraction. Right. Um, you have some choices uh, with what you do with the initial extract, extraction. Is that same thing true with the oil? Because we're talking like uh, on the panacea, like if you have the panacea joint, I know you didn't bring one, but the, it's a distillate, right? So no, our panacea cone is actually in, infused with live resin. With live resin, okay. Yes, so with we're, we're launching an oil cone too in the next couple of weeks, that's gonna be our distillate cone. So if you're looking at it as good, better, best, distillate in the oil cone, wax in the sesh cone, and live resin in our panacea cone. Awesome. So, that, like, how did those start life? So they start life in a, in a very similar way. Um, first of all, I should say that your extraction solvent has a lot to do with it. You'll see a much different um, consistency out of, say, a CO2 extraction than you will out of the butane or propane ways of, of doing it. So, so we see that on our shelves. So you see that, right? There's some different... A lot of the times, CO2 extractions don't end up in a stable state where it it's, can be a shatter or wax. You've really probably never seen that. There is a CO2 wax, but it's very, very thin. Right. So that's uh, better for if you're going straight to a thin oil type of, of a methodology or application. Whereas we do um, butane and propane extractions. Right. Um, the end product is going to, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the product exiting the extraction method is going to be very similar. It's right. what you do with it at that point, okay? Right. Um, if you have done a butane extraction and you want to get shattered, it's about just creating a thin slab and, of course, you know, cooking out the residual solvents and keeping it in that form. Right. Really, all wax is is an oxidized shatter. So when you whip, just like if you whip, uh, you know, you start out with uh, heavy cream, right. but then you start to whip Everything. it, it starts to turn into that kind of a thicker Thick. wax, you know, because yeah. you're, you're folding oxygen into that. So that's really, you know, it's a proprietary method that we use, Absolutely. but at the same time, that's really all you're doing to get one or the other. Now, you can for sure have a run that comes out that, looks like it needs to be taken to a wax anyways. Right. If it's agitated too, too much, exiting the tube or whatever, right. you could get that oxidation going and there's no turning back. So you pretty much have to wax that out. You've probably heard of waxed out, you know, a slab that waxed out around the corners, got a little bit too much agitation or right. oxidized, and it starts to um, cloud up. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually that stuff that, back, we, we stopped making shatter a couple years ago just because um, our faux wax was so popular, um, and we needed basically to just dedicate ourselves to what was what we who we were. Um, what you're working on? What what what's the, what's the successful product? Yeah, exactly, and that's what we were seeing in the in the numbers and the feedback we were having at events. So we stuck with it. Um, plus, we did we achieve a non-detectable um, amount of residual solvents, and that's what's left of the butane or propane. In this case, we're purely propane on the wax, but we achieve, because you agitate it and do a little bit more post-process, right. We the there's no residual solvents still in the product, at least right. non-detectable to a Colorado test. Whereas butane, we could always clear the limit, but there was something in there. Right, there and was just always something like that little point zero zero one. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. quite, you know. It wasn't even you close can't to maybe. It. Like, no, not, not But it's in there. But it's there, and you can't say it's like a solid free Yeah, solid. and we didn't like that, and we felt like we could see the industry going the way of non-detectable. So we said, let's stick to this faux wax, this is what we do. So, so yeah, I mean, it's really, that's kind of funny, too, that you say that, because in the beginning, shatter was always considered better than wax. Wax was a little bit of a secondary product when I first got in the industry, but since then, I always liked wax. It, it's been a little bit more flavorful, a little bit more of a better representation of the strain to me. And uh, sure enough, um, I think that, that wax has come to the forefront in the market. And Absolutely. I mean, I'm not trying to discount shatter. We do have a lot of really nice shatter on the Absolutely. shelf. Absolutely. If that's, if that's your bag, that's your bag. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I like the, I like the, the wax. Um, tell me about butter. Is that pretty much wax? So in, in, when you, uh, yes, uh, I, really, the, the, the fact of the matter is that something that's going to be a, a more of a butter than a wax is a little bit less stable because it has a more terpene rich, rich uh, content. Maybe it was the strain that brought those terps through. Maybe it was uh, you know just the freshness, whatever it might have been. Uh, it's just got so much terpene content in it that it won't let it really solidify. So I find uh, butters to be slightly more flavorful. Absolutely. Um, on my end. And sometimes you see a sugar fun? too. Yeah, I'm not trying. Like, so what's sugar then? Like, is that? 
Yeah, so that's going to be something where I think that um, you see a little bit more of a crystallization in the THC, so that they're forming those little balls of crumble that become the sugar. Um, and I do find that to be super terpene rich as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I just see all these different uh, names on concentrates. I know. I know sometimes, even as somebody that's in the industry, it can be like overwhelming. And a lot of times, let's be straight. Like um, some people, what some people call it butter, some people call it wax. Sure. And some people call it sugar. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, it's it's your own name nomenclature. And I mean, you guys are consistent. That goes back to your your, your one of your bees, your products. Yes. You always have that consistent product from that process. Um, but yeah, no, like just having that understanding of. Like, what is life, you know? Yeah. When, when I'm training a new person at craft, it always is a little bit, you know, they start to say, so rosin, no, not rosin, resin. You know, just slight differences right. in names, but um, it's wild. But it also makes sense once you get, you know, into it. Every little way of different, you know, extraction creates a slightly different end product, and you got to come up with a new name for it. So um, we try to be consistent between those three consistencies on our foe, um, sugar, wax, or butter. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to set the expectations for the consumer no. to go home and know what they're when getting. When you get that hex box, you know what you're getting inside that hex box. Right. I want, that's what we want, and that's what we want people to feel confident in and, and build some brand loyalty around that, that people absolutely. feel that they can say, whether they're in Denver or Colorado or not, they have a friend here, they can say, go in and look for the craft box. Absolutely, know? absolutely. You know, quality. All right, so... Do we want to try some, uh, do you have your pen? Do you want to try some uh, distillate? I do, I have a battery. Okay, let's grab yeah, a battery. Yeah, I have a battery too. I, I left that in. All I'll right. Grab that whenever, but. Now, batteries are pretty simple. Like, it's really just any 510 thread. We'll Correct. With that. Now, y'all offer a perfect little battery. It's really reasonably priced. Um, and we carry that in the store, but definitely there's fancier options. I think we also have like Rick and Morty battery. It's like, oh, nice. It's I love it's like Rick and Morty batteries. Oh, man, you give me one of those. True story. I got in trouble because somebody asked me to open it and so they could see it. And I didn't realize it was a collector's item. Really? Who'd you get in trouble by, Richard? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hold myself in contempt for that, yes. So I well, open up go through them all, but this is our panacea. So this is distillate with live resin terps. Okay. Um, it's our lemon G, which happens to be uh, one of my favorite strains, one of the best ones. We've grown this in our garden since day one. Um, so it's actually, it's a warm citrus flavor that really fills the mouth and coats the mouth. Um, it's one of my all-time favorites for sure. So we can kick it off with that one. And I think we can roll into one of our sesh, Banana Kush. Ooh. I've had the Banana Kush, it's, it's delicious. Lemon G, I've, I've had, I smoked the sesh on the Lemon G. Okay, cool. Once so this twice. is live resin turf, so it's gonna be a little bit more, a better representation even. But you can see this is our one gram cart. So right. you can see it's significantly longer, but same technology, same everything inside. Well, so Consistent color, consistent, even between the strains. Yes, absolutely. So hook that one up to that bad boy first I think and then we'll, we'll roll into this this one gram banana kush after that all right and yeah so I mean um, trying to set yourself apart um, is difficult in the market I certainly enjoy uh, a lot of different brands myself you know and and like I said I've just enjoyed being a part of something you get kind of caught up with the daily spreadsheet mentality oh and to remind gosh. yourself you know I mean people think this is such an easy job like, sure you know, like you just go to work like this is what we're doing right. most this, of the time. Is, this is all we do all day right? yeah no 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 this this is easily one of the more stressful industries I've worked in I mean and like the constant change like you, you were saying like dog ears it's <coughs> accurate it's accurate like the, there's new regulations that come out every few months mm. which one called that's lemon G. Really good. That's our fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Really I believe like the, the warmth of the of the citrus. Yeah. <laughs> With the kick of the distillate, it's bringing it up to ninety percent. Wow. So. Yeah. No, that I wouldn't know that was ninety percent. That that. I know. That, like, yeah. that like, felt like breathing nothing. I was like air. I know. Smooth. Super smooth. Nice I think smooth. that the lemon G might be one of my favorite strains that we do. Um, I, I like citrus, citrus turf, so I mean that's good. And again, all your strains and everything you make is all in house, right? So on the medical side, everything <coughs> is in house. Um, right. We we have a medical grow. On the recreational side, we have long long term relationships. So not everything on the rec side is grown by craft, but 
You Believe know, it or not, we've been able to influence some people to grow things our way. Absolutely. Um, kind of absolutely. a 10, 10 point, you know, it's probably more like 20 now, but all the way from a white glove on the windowsill to <coughs> the newts. You know what I mean? So, right. and they're happy to do it. We have a great, you know, system that we um, do on our rec side. So, I mean, on our medical side, excuse me. Um, but yeah, it's been the same kind of recipe since day one. So and It's hard to argue with the results, right? Right. That's good stuff. That is. Yeah, man, I lo I've loved watching the evolution of the cartridge. I think that for the most part, it derives from dabbers trying to get as close to that experience as they can on the go, you know? Oh, yeah. And so it started out less so. <laughs> it no, started no, out I less remember so. a gardener or two that would just drive around with a propane torch specifically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know, I, I, I mean, know. I can't say much. I used to drive around with like my little nectar collector Absolutely. and I my nectar propane collector torch too. Yeah. and just be like driving with my knee, trying to like just yeah. hit a dab. I know. You want that? Because nothing you just quite want the matches. Dab. Yeah. No, no. Although I will say this: the, if you're if you're not going to dab the sesh joints, I'm going to keep talking about. It. We have them on the med side. We have them on the rec side. Um, med, you know, I've got one Let's one lady that out. comes in and she buys. I want to say like she buys. She maxes out like point seven five. So for on the med side, that's like seventy five uh, joints. Oh yeah, seventy five joints. And she we Whoa. see her about yeah. once a month. You know, she lives up in uh, she lives up somewhere up north mm -hmm. and. She's like, yeah, you know, she comes and sees us, and we take care of her for a month. Mm. And that's, uh, that's the banana kush. But so, she loves them. She, she <coughs> loves them. We got to get her something, hook her up with some craft gear. Remind me, and I'll send over a little gift gift bag for her so we make sure she feels the love. We certainly love anybody who's a fan of our product. And we knew we were on something with <coughs> our It took a little bit, just like anything uh, takes to catch on. But we knew we were on to something because... Our customers, the, the bud tenders and the managers were saying, we sold out of your cones, but really just we bought them. You know, kind of like you were saying, you said it's a <laughs> favorite. About 25%, no, like legit. Um, and so we knew that we had something. It was only a matter of time. A, because you know you have some people that are talking from experience in the shop now. You know, that's always great that you have people that are buying them. But, but you know, we have personal relationships with people that we know know their stuff, you know? And yeah. they were telling us it was that they enjoyed them. So, <coughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I was, I'm very proud of that product in particular. That one tasted a little spicier. It was a little spicier. Smooth, it's a little but spicier. I think that was, that's the banana kush, right? This is the banana kush. Yeah, so I'm probably getting that kush turp. Yeah. That's probably what's happening. You want to let's. Original turps. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking that. Yeah, I so that's the more flavor, flavorful approach is, on the set. It's definitely very flavorful. Um, I would, I would get it if I could. You know, Some people, I like it. Really want that to come through, you know. And again, you know, I think that they want more to their experience than just think about alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. um, not everybody's out buying, um, you know, Everclear. No, you know what I mean? No, like, no, no. You buy a beer that's five percent because you like the experience, the taste that comes with it. Now you're not you're gonna get drunk either way. You know yeah.